everyone to move over this way, please. Come on around. Come on around. <laughs> A lot like trying to move cattle. Let's... I think I did that once. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, we'll get started. Well, welcome to everyone, and we appreciate everyone coming for a very important afternoon for us. This is a, a day that has finally arrived, a day that uh, began a few years ago, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but it's a culmination of, of a long effort in order to get here. I would like to introduce a few people at the very beginning here who have uh, played a role in this project and make sure that uh, we ask them to be recognized. Uh, this, the renovation of this facility is a, a, an economic development project. It's been that from the beginning. It was funded outside of higher education as an economic development project and this, certainly the activity that's going on here reflects uh, that kind of uh, support. We want to express appreciation to the architects on this uh, project. It's a firm with which we've had uh, a lot of experience on our campus previously, uh, Johnson Romanowitz, and I think we have here today uh, uh, Boyer Moore and Joel Jones. Is it, raise your hands and wave way back in the back there. You guys did a great job designing this. And we appreciate you. Well. handling the construction on this building, and they simply had a major task in front of them along with Johnson Romanowicz, which was to make this facility not look like Kroger Walmart anymore. <laughs> and I think they did a great job. Today, from the Alliance Corporation, we've got L.H. Waller, and I don't know if Robert Renshaw made it or not. Where's L.H.? Over here. Thank you all for a job well done. They both, those two uh, firms teamed up for our Preston Center on campus as well and did a, a wonderful job with that. Let me recognize the members of, uh, uh, well, two different organizations, and I don't know, I know uh, Dr. Downing is here. Two different foundations helped us handle the financing on this. One was the College Heights Foundation, and I know Dr. Dero Downing is here. Dr. Downing is right here, and also the Ogden Foundation, and I don't know if anyone's here from the Ogden Foundation or not. But thank you all for your help in that. Some of you will recall this facility was on the market for about $2.7 million, 12 acres and, and a facility that looked like it may be on its last leg. And at that point in time, we were able to get uh, approximately $2 million of that gifted, and then we were able to finance the rest of the uh, amount in order to put this into, make it come to fruition. Let me recognize also the members of our Board of Regents who are present. Uh, Burns Mercer, and I'll introduce everyone if you raise your hand. Monty Hankins, the vice chair of the board. Fred Mudge, over here. Kristen Bale from Glasgow, back here. Peggy Lofman from Bowling Green, over here. Donald Smith, a student regent, is back here. And Ray Mendel, I don't know if our faculty regent is here or not. But uh, let me ask Bernie Mercer, as a chair of the board, to come forward for uh, greetings from behalf of the board of trustees. Bernie? Thank you, Tom. I just want to say welcome on behalf of the board. We have been eagerly anticipating the opening of this building. It is being long anticipated. We hope you enjoy the next two days here, and we look forward to the activities after that. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if any of our local legislators were able to make it this afternoon. I was looking for them earlier. There's Billy Ray Smith. Billy Ray and Nick, uh, Nick Senator Nick Kofoglis. We just want to tell you how much we appreciate your support in the General Assembly in helping make sure that this funding came to pass. So thank you. <laughs> also from the state, we have uh, Clark Beecham, who is the uh, Commissioner for Facilities Management. Clark, over here, oversees this. Clark, thank you for being here. And then I also want to recognize two people on our staff who did such an outstanding job in overseeing this project. Paul Morgan, our uh, university architect. Where are you, Paul? Over here. Over here. 
and Kimball Johnson, who is Director of Facilities Management. Thank you all for a job well done. You know, one of the, uh, ind the individual who came to me in 1989 and said, you know, there just ought to be a way where we can be more involved in economic development. And maybe we ought to pull together some various units on campus to try to make that come to fruition was Dr. Steve House. And Steve, of course, is the executive director of the uh, Institute for Economic Development. And when you merge Steve's dream with the frustration that I'd had for years with all of the expertise we have on a campus, people who have the best and latest knowledge in every area in the world, it seems like, and there's no way for the public to get to them in a very efficient manner. And Steve came up with an idea that would allow us to, to funnel those requests and to make uh, that kind of expertise available to the public in a very business-like way. And so, Steve, I want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, your foresight in that. And if you would, why don't you come forward and make a couple of remarks about the Institute. I want to say on behalf of uh, the directors and the staff members of all the units that comprise the Institute for Economic Development, how pleased we are to, to have you here today on what is a very special occasion for us. Bowling Green in Warren County truly is unique in terms of so many different organizations working together, collaborating together, and cooperating together. And the turnout here today, I think, is an indication of that. So we appreciate uh, your presence, and we hope that you will come back often and utilize this great resource, this great instrument that we have. As you look through the facility, I would suggest to you that perhaps what you do not see is almost as important as what you do see. And by that I mean the technology uh, that this resource brings to South Central Kentucky. Already uh, we have brought in programs uh, sponsored by the American Management Association, the American Bar Association. Some of those programs were being broadcast out of New York, Los Angeles, to Chicago. And the ability to receive those by way of satellites and to present them to our citizens here in South Central Kentucky, I think is an asset that uh, this facility will, will bring more and more often. And then in the not too distant future, we're going to raise that level just a little bit higher and actually be able to broadcast from this site so that we can originate programs from this facility and again by way of satellite, uh, various areas around the North American continent can receive them. So we're very pleased uh, to, to have the opportunity to use this great facility as an instrument for the programs we'll be delivering. Today is a day, I think, to recognize all of those who have contributed, and there are so many. But I would like to, to introduce just a few individuals and a few organizations that have been so important to us. And after I name those as a group, we will recognize them. Uh, first, I see in the, in the far back uh, a representative from the Economic Development Administration. Mr. Boyd Rose, uh, Boyd, if you would raise your hand, representing the Southeastern Regional Office in Atlanta, Georgia. EDA provides our operational funding, and without support from EDA, much of what we do would be impossible. And Boyd, I appreciate your coming today, and thank you, sir, for your continuing support. <laughs> From the Knoxville, Tennessee office of TVA, uh, Mr. Hugh Grenade. Uh, TVA was one of the original sponsors, provided seed money for leadership development programs that have now been provided in five different counties in Kentucky. And Hugh, on behalf of the Institute, we appreciate the support of TVA. And then I see to my right, uh, Pat Walters, representing the State Office of the Small Business Administration. SBA most recently came through with some funds that will enable us to carry out a retiree attraction project and for many years supported our Small Business Development Center. And Pat, we thank you for coming today. South Central Bell, much of the technology that is available here, much of the hard work that has been done in creating the Office of the Future uh, has been provided by South Central Bell and by Ms. Joe Shipley and Mr. H.B. Clark. 
and we appreciate their continued support. Uh, AT&T, within the last year we received a computer lab from AT&T and uh, we will provide uh, computer training in the near, near future on some of the most modern technology available through their offices and Mary Lou Cook is representing AT&T today. And then our most recent partner and the final one that I will mention is the RICO Corporation. And Mr. Johnny Wilson of Modern Business Systems is with us today and they have donated some equipment in the Office of the Future which is truly state-of-the-art equipment. So for all these folks who have and are continuing to support our efforts, will you join me in recognizing them? And finally, to a very special person, I'd like to, to make this statement. For several years, I knew a gentleman in Simpson County by the name of Mr. John Butts. And Mr. Butts passed away earlier this year. But he had a very close and personal relationship with Wallace and Martha Wilkins. He spoke of them often and with the greatest respect. And on one particular occasion, for some reason, a statement that he made, I still remember, and he said, I count it a privilege to call him my friend. I don't think I can say it any better than that, Governor. Thank you for being our friend. And thank all of you for coming. Thank you, Steve. A couple of people that uh, I've seen back here that we should uh, be sure to mention it would be Commissioner Robbie Bond, who is from representing the city, and County Judge Executive Mike Buchanan. Mike, we thank both of you all for being here and representing the city and county government. We've got a lot of partnerships planned we want to talk to you about down the road here. Also, I would like to recognize the head of the Bowling Green Warren County Chamber of Commerce, uh, president this year. Uh, Mr. Frank St. Charles. Frank, where are you? So we can wait. Thank you for all of your support and helping us today. You know, we were talking about this facility and, and the programming and where, how do we house it, what do we do with it, and we, we debated a couple of different options. One option was to go for funding for a new facility and try to find a place on campus to, to squeeze it in, even though we're somewhat landlocked. And another option was, as we looked at around for different areas for a place to put it and we started to focus on this place and it looked pretty sad at the time but this side of town seemed to be getting just a little darker as some businesses were shutting down their lights and, and moving some other directions and we came to the conclusion that we could be of service not only in finding a place to house this operation but also to help Bowling Green and Warren County in terms of this side of town and helping it to maybe become a little more alive economically and so we made a decision to go for this facility and that's when the movement started then in terms of finding a place for it to be. But we couldn't pull this off by ourselves because even though we might be able to find the financing for the $700,000 to finally put this place in our possession and start forward, it was still going to require an awful lot of work. And so we put together the package and uh, Steve and I drove to Frankfurt one day and had an appointment with uh, Governor Wilkinson. And we went in and we laid out a plan. Here was a, a business governor, a governor who understood economic development to its fullest sense. And we sat in those chairs kind of anxious up on the edge of our chairs talking to him and trying to explain to him the concept that we had in mind. And we were selling and he didn't say a word. He just listened. And we didn't know if we were getting ahead or falling behind, but we just kept on talking. When you get nervous, you just keep on talking. And finally, after a while, he just kind of looked at us and said, uh, I like it, I'm for it, and I'll support it. And we started talking again, and he reminded us that when you close a sale, <laughs> you don't need to keep on talking. So we said, thank you very much, and we kind of got out of there as fast as we could. <laughs> now, a lot of times uh, promises are made behind closed doors like that, and sometimes when they see the light of day, it's hard to find people to line up and say, yeah, I said that. And it's hard to get them to, to stand the test then to actually provide that support uh, when the time comes. Governor Wilkinson did that. 
not only supported us in terms of working with the General Assembly, and they responded very readily with the help of our legislators that you've already been introduced today, plus Jody Richards, uh, not only for the money to help for the funding of the renovation of this facility, but then also some operational dollars as he brought forward that support. Governor Wilkinson uh, was a business governor, as I said, who helped this state get on the right track in many, many areas of business. And as I've said to him on several times, that although from day to day one might assume that uh, the press was not necessarily your greatest friend in some areas, that I thought history would be much kinder to his administration than the immediate day. And I believe that's already starting to unfold and become true. Governor, I want to thank you for what all you've done for Western Kentucky University during your time as governor and the continued support that you show for this institution. Would you come forward, please, and have a remark? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, some of you may know that Doug Alexander, uh, who, who um, is a graduate of West Kentucky University, uh, <clears throat> is my press secretary and was all the four years that I was governor. He is now, I believe, on the alumni board here at Western, so at least once a month, Mr. President, I get a full report on the activities at Western. And uh, I'm very enthusiastic about that because uh, whether or not I ought to, I know all about your economic development plans, I know all about your private funding plans, and all about uh, the talent that you're recruiting, and uh, you've done a marvelous job at this university, and that, that's not just my opinion, which doesn't matter as much anymore, but that's the opinion. <laughs> that's the opinion of this community, and we're, we're proud you're here, and we thank you for all you're doing for this university. Steve uh, House introduced me a moment ago to Danny House, and I was immediately perceptive enough to know that there was a relationship there. <laughs> I was uh, very pleased to talk with him, and I said to Danny, look, let me tell you, you have a great father. And he agreed. This man and the immense talent and understanding that he's shown, not only for this university and this community, but for economic development, uh, is terrific. And I recognized that right away. I threatened on a number of occasions to try to take him away from Tom and move him to Frankfurt, but I never really followed through on those threats. But Steve, thank you for all you've done. It's, uh, it's been a lot, and when Tom was talking about and Steve were talking in my office about this concept. Uh, I think one of the, of the remarks that I did make was the fact that so many regions of this Commonwealth have so much to offer. The natural resources, the talent, the human resources, and all those things that make for great, great economic development, they simply lack the expertise to know how to package those things, to put them together, to identify those around the country that may need their particular resources and match those up and go out and market them in a logical manner. This institute, the thing that really pushed the button when we talked about this institute was the fact that among other things it would do precisely that. It would help regions and, and uh, of this state and areas of this state identify the, their resources their great points, help them package those things, develop them, go out and market them in a logical manner, and uh, oh, what a difference uh, five years makes. Uh, if you, and I'm sure many of you did, saw the Strip Shopping Center back five years ago, and look at it now. I mean, it's, uh, it's testimony to the fact that you're doing great things here at Western, and, and I'm, I'm happy about that. I've got just a few formal remarks, but before I do, um, a couple of other things I want to say. This Commonwealth will never fully understand and appreciate how we're going to miss Bill Natcher. I'll just give you one tiny example. We either built or designed five bridges across the Ohio River in my administration. That was Maysville, 
two at Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky, one for Louisville, one for Owensboro. And some of those are under construction, the others are completed, some are in various stages of planning, but in every single instance when we needed federal matching funds for that type of infrastructure, I would call the chairman and I can repeat to you verbatim what he would say to me. He would say, Governor, the appropriations bill will be on the president's desk at 2 o'clock on Thursday. And the appropriation bill was on the president's desk at 2 o'clock on Thursday, and we never missed a request or payment. What uh, an immense resource Bill Natcher was, and, um, and um, I tell you, this Commonwealth surely is going to miss him. Another fellow that we're going to miss and that I already miss a lot is Frank Miller. Betty is back there and, and uh, uh, Frank Miller was my friend and, and, uh, and, and uh, an all around good guy and, and worked hard uh, for this community and for this area and never missed an opportunity to promote it in, in any way he could. And I'm, I miss Frank. Uh, Tom has already said something about John Taylor Butts, and John Taylor Butts uh, lived and breathed for economic development, not only for Simpson County, but for Warren and Barron and all the rest down here. And of course, we miss him. And one more. Standing over to my right is Jim Ramsey, Dr. James Ramsey. I talked about stealing Steve House, and Tom stole Jim Ramsey from me. <laughs> I threatened and didn't follow through on it. Tom didn't threaten, but he followed through. <laughs> but in my view, this fellow was the best um, state economist that this Commonwealth ever had, and I'll debate that on the courthouse steps of any courthouse in any county in this Commonwealth. And we were talking just a minute ago, uh, uh, Jim, we never had a revenue shortfall while you were there, right? All our projections were met, and, and that's because he estimated it properly. And if you think I'm uh, not being exactly correct about that, just check the record. And as Happy Chandler used to say, uh, 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 rumors and, and all of that fall, but the record stands. And Jim Ramsey never had a revenue shortfall all the years that he was predicting revenue for the Commonwealth. And I guess, Jim, the only other thing I'd say, now Doug Alexander would say, now Governor, you ought to leave it right there. <laughs> but I never did do what Doug advised me to do, so the other, thing, the other thing that I would add to that is, is that they ought to have you back there now, my friend. <laughs> exactly, f <laughs> exactly five years ago today, and I asked, Again, I asked Doug, I said, Doug, was this by design or was it by accident? And as far as we can determine, it was by accident. But exactly five years ago today, this very day, I came to Bowling Green to announce this project and to announce the support for the uh, Convention Civic Center Hotel Complex. And it was on this very day and the articles in the newspaper uh, announcing this project came the following day, but five years ago today. Now that'll give you some sense of how long it takes to, to uh, visualize things, to, to get, get them funded, to get them planned, designed, built, and done, and here we are five <laughs> years later. And I don't look a bit older, Tom. I think you do look a little older. But... <laughs> now the fact that I was in Bowling Green five years ago today was not particularly unusual because I never missed an opportunity to come here and I was here a lot as governor. And I love to come here. Um, it is coincidental, however, I think, that I was here to pledge my support for this very project. Well, it seemed like that every time I came to Bowling Green, something good was happening in those days. A new road, <laughs> uh, uh, and some new or expanding industry, or the announcement of projects like this, or, or some other kind of thing. And a governor who can only serve four years rarely has an opportunity to see their projects through to completion. 
Um, as a matter of fact, most of the time, by the time a project gets completed, everybody's already forgotten about who funded it and who did it and all anyway. And new governors, myself included, are always anxious to take credit for it, even though somebody else started it. So you don't always get to see the fruits of your labors. Uh, and, uh, but I certainly haven't forgotten the hospitality that this community afforded me every time I was here. I was never any more welcome uh, uh, than I was here, and I'm honored that you would welcome me back so warmly today. And even the sheriff, bless his heart, came to the airport to meet me, and he was so mad at me while I was governor. He didn't even always do that while I was governor. And I said, <laughs> I'm honored that the sheriff would come out today to see me. But this... Uh, institute certainly brings together the vital components of success and economic development. There's no question about it. I haven't heard all of the latest developments and all the new technological things that are planned here, but I know that uh, uh, it will be a boom for this area, and I also know that, uh, that when all of the components come together, it not only makes the individual components stronger, but it makes the whole unit, uh, the whole, I guess, strongest of all. Tom Meredith is truly one of the great gifted leaders in this commonwealth. There's no question about that, and guided by his vision. And I guess I should add under the steady hand of Steve House, and with the spirit and support of this community, which is second to none in this commonwealth, the Western Kentucky Economic Development Institute will contribute in a substantial way in a major way to the economic health and well-being of this region. And I personally believe, and thought so at the time, that it could very well ensure the success, economic success, of this region of our commonwealth for decades to come. I think that I kept every promise um, that I made to the people of Kentucky. I'm going to say I did anyway, because nobody's pointed out a major one to me yet that I didn't keep. I promised to reform education. I promise to work on jobs all across this commonwealth, and I think that Kentucky's education reforms today are still considered the model for the nation. Let me take one second and tell you that Governor Cuomo in New York today is working with his legislature to reform education in New York. And if you will go back to 1988 and 1989 and examine the things that we were talking about that were vital, of vital importance to Kentucky's education reform, you'll see that New York today is talking about exactly the same things, the same items, and having the same debate. So here they are, some five or six or seven years behind Kentucky in what we consider a major economic uh, uh, education reform and economic development. I promised to create jobs, and we did. For a period of time, I think Kentucky was there on every list of every major corporation or, or, or company in this country that planned to expand or grow. Kentucky was a consideration. Personal income rose, unemployment went down, I promised the lottery and we got it. Uh, I, I promised to do something about the sorry state of our infrastructure and we did. And I love to tell the story because it's true. In the four years of the Wilkinson administration, we paved enough roads that if laid end to end would reach from here to Hong Kong. And we laid enough water lines in rural Kentucky. And I believe this with all my heart, that there's nothing any more vital, any more necessary than clean, safe water. We laid enough water lines in rural Kentucky to, to reach from here to Portland, Maine and back funded them and laid them in four years. Well, we built the roads and the bridges and the water lines and some of them, in fact, like US 6880 right here in Bowling Green. And I never will forget then Judge Griffin saying to me, every governor in my lifetime has promised to do something about 6880. Well, I haven't driven it yet, but I intend to. And I'm told that uh, Construction is well along the way, and some 15 or 20 miles out of Bowling Green now here is completed. Well, I'm proud of everything we were able to do, but I may be most proud of the fact that we ended the neglect of parts of Kentucky, places like Casey County, Kentucky, where we used to say that uh, the only jobs in Casey County were jury duty. <laughs> 
And we've made a difference. There was no East Kentucky or West Kentucky uh, or Golden Triangle when I was governor. There was only one Kentuckian, and I tried to think as, uh, of it as one Kentucky for all Kentuckians. We did that, and I hoped it helped. And thank you for inviting me today. Well, that concludes our formal program. We've got exhibits all around. If you haven't had a chance to see those, I hope you'll take time to do so. I think you'll find them fascinating and interesting, and a little glimpse into the future. And I think there's also some food. So please enjoy yourselves. Thank you for being here. Huh? Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Can I have your attention again, please? Can I have your attention again, please? Somebody help me back through there, pass the word. Tell Neil, Neil turn it away just a minute. Usually when you come to a ribbon cutting grand opening, one of the things you do is cut the ribbon. It's been a long day today. So we're, if you all don't mind, if you'll hold on just a minute, we're gonna cut a little ribbon up here. All right, let's see.